Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jerson Hernandez, and I'm the host of the Understand Me podcast, a podcast designed to give our everyday viewers like you and me a voice in the mainstream media. If you haven't had a chance yet, head over to our website at understandme.blog to read the topic of today's podcast. Today's podcast, episode number five, revolves around our blog post titled George Floyd, The Man They Made the World Stand. For today's podcast, what better person to have an open discussion on this subject? I have actor and collegiate athlete Kenny Ware. Uh, today's podcast, will be discussing today's topics, police brutality, Black Lives Matter, systemic racism, free speech, and social media. Let's get started. Hey everyone, my name is Kenny Ware. Happy to be a part of this Understand Me podcast. I'm here to talk about some uh, social issues in the current environment today that we're dealing with. Um, you guys can follow me at Official Kenny Ware on Instagram and Real Kenny Ware on uh, Twitter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening in. As I mentioned, Kenny Ware is our guest today. A uh, round of applause for Kenny. Feel welcomed. It was a nice intro. I try, I try. All right, Kenny, like we mentioned earlier, the topics that we're going to be discussing today are uh, the George Floyd incident, police brutality, uh, Black Lives Matter, the systemic racism undergoing in current America, um, and then free speech and social media. So we're going to get straight into it. George Floyd incident. Yeah. Recently, as uh, if you haven't heard about this incident, you're living under a rock. I definitely encourage you to research on this inf- on this incident. Uh, George Floyd was recently murdered by Minneapolis police um, with a knee on the individual's neck. The individual died, fortunately, uh, because the officer was on his neck for eight minutes and forty six seconds. And if, the, and if that doesn't scream police brutality, I have no idea what will. But initially, as a black man in America, what was your initial reactions once you heard about the situation and actually saw the video of it going on? Well, yeah, man, you can see it, like seeing something so visceral. And that's where we're kind of at in a nation where we have to kind of see a video to make it so polarizing and see the actual and not actually believe it. Um, and I think that... Uh, <clears throat> For me, when I saw it, it's like, yeah, I, I already know that. So going to social media and posting the same kind of uh, first meme that went around that says, Colin, that Colin Kaepernick kneeling down, and this one bothers you, but this one doesn't kind of thing. That one went around, and that was my first kind of emphasize to what's going on. And I started thinking, we have to educate ourselves, and people aren't understanding that this has been going on. It's going to continue going on, and we're just now seeing it more so. It's so visceral to watch eight minutes and that that long to see that happening right in front of you. And then there's no real protocol to what you do. There's so many visceral reactions as I would have done this, I would have done that. Yeah, but here's this sense. person who is so keenly aware. I wish I could have I wish I could be that individual who was taping there that he was so aware that this was happening, that this was what he was doing and it was so unnecessary that he had to capture it and you could hear it in his pleas. And that's what was so like um, emotional, about emotional. It, yeah, for a lot of people is that you you don't just see a video that you're interpreting. You you hear the narration this the whole time that he's doing this, and hands in the pocket, just kind of just you know it's a uh, yeah taking and, a face after the fact. Oh, definitely. I think the most gruesome thing about that is just the lack of care the the officer yeah. showed. And, and and you didn't tell me that four. Four men yeah. needed to kneel on him where one of the men is hands in his pocket. It doesn't really show that that guy is being too aggressive to you. Exactly. But that's neither here nor there because the, we'll get to the point where that didn't even need to happen in the first place. Where yeah. that need to that, – that sort of uh, physicalness didn't even need to get to that point. Yeah, and then on top of that, like just the whole, the whole thing of it, the nature of it itself, it's uh, police officers – Literally, the people that you would call in case of an emergency end up murdering an individual in the cold manner that they did. Mm-hmm. It kind of just screams out, where's the morality in life? Where's the morality for these individuals? Was there even any to begin with? And just Damn. at what point did they say, all right, enough is enough? Why at 8 minutes and 46 seconds did they say, all right, now it's good? What couldn't make that? What couldn't they do before to stop that within 10 seconds? Even at – it's just – it boggles my mind how we're still living in America on – year 2020 and we're still dealing with similar issues Mm -hmm. of uh this type of brutality ever since the rodney king's days and i think that speaks a lot to the riots and everything that occurred in the aftermath and that's something i like point out on is like i I was 10 years old when uh 
Rodney King uh, riots happened, Rodney King beating and the acquittal of the officers, and mm-hmm. there, there was a lot more going on to it in the in the in the area with LA too. There was a young black lady who was shot in the convenience store. Yep, with Korean you know, owner. Yeah, and there was so there's a lot of um, a lot of heat going on in LA already. So police getting off after people watching that video, it's kind of like well. It was they were legally allowed to do that apparently, and that's what the law said. So they got off, and that was that's what people didn't see is that that law, that system, the people that made that happen, that was what the injustice was. That you said, well, you're you're even having a debate. You're yep. watching that, and you know it's unnecessary. You're watching the knee on the guy's back. You wa- you don't see the other three guys behind the van that, in the first video. Yep. You see it in a later video where you think, well, that guy, what's he do-? you know what? And then a lot of people are going, what did he do to deserve that? Was he gonna you know? Why didn't he just listen to them? Yep. Well, That's right. it's the same concept as if someone walked up to you and told you to do something. Not a police officer, just an individual on the street. For sure. And chances are, if what you don't want to be do if it's what you don't want to do you're not going to do it but if a police officer with a gun walks up to you and tells you not to do something and that's not something you're you want to do or you're not allowed to you're it's legal i'm doing whatever i can i'm walking here i'm just being a person if i'm being suspicious to who Yep. Doesn't mean that I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, you think I'm being, I'm not. It's a perception at yeah. the end of the day. So that's what you see when you see individuals struggle against the compliance against the police. Stop. Don't move. Put your hands on the back. Get on your knees. But at this whole time, I didn't do anything wrong. Yep. I'm not. Why am I getting? No. Now, if some other person on the street walked up to you and said, get on the ground, put your hands behind your head. You know, you're not going to do that, yeah, right? Of course, because you didn't do anything wrong, and they have no authority. So we're designed to think that this guy with the badge can tell us to do whatever we want. Yep. Even though you can state the facts and the laws and legalities to them, even more so sometimes than these officers. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Right, hundred percent. And you know, and we'll get into how we want to defund the, the police departments and and that, and that's going to how it's going to have to be to reform. Because there's no way it's kind of like our military. We can't just get rid of it. Yeah, because we do has... have actual crime. We yeah, do for, for sure. have a necessary need for this. But the design behind the police department was to go capture slaves who thought they were free. Yeah, and that's historical facts right there. Yep. Right? So police department were let's go round these people up so we can get them back to work for us. Yep. So that's what's you know, if so facto transgressed into over the years is let's go get these people so we can put them in jail and keep them looking like they're bad. And yep, demographic, yep. you want to say, well, there are only 13% African-American uh, black people in the United States, and they're going to make up the way more majority of prison systems. Something it, doesn't it, add up at that point, to be honest. Yeah, but that's and that's, and that's statistically true, which means there's one side's going to say, well, look, there you go. More black people, more colored people, more minorities are in jail. They're the ones doing the crime. Yeah. So let's put policies into place. Let's put police force in their neighborhoods. Let's put helicopters flying around their neighborhoods. Yeah. Which, by the way, I hear people in Hollywood now like complaining. Oh, can my you God, get rid of helicopters? Yeah. Why are helicopters around? And then I'll you know go school them, and then I'm like, hey, when I first moved here. I saw petitions everywhere about getting rid of police helicopters yep. because of the noise. That's not just because this is happening. Yeah. It's happening in your neighborhood. Yeah, it affects you, yep. Because of the protests and the march and all this stuff. And yeah, someone 100%. who po- pointed out, I don't know who the gentleman was. I just saw a video where he was talking to someone on uh, Fox News about bringing violence. And um, uh, he, uh, he wasn't saying violence is isn't the answer yeah but violence seems to get the results oh yeah 100 percent. because we had people protests and other stuff we had five years of someone not being arrested uh for killing someone when well, they're in uniform because of due process and we yeah. had to let it play out we had to find all the facts exactly but no no march no no riots no protests and anything like that here we have George Floyd and everything else corresponding with it, march, protests, riots. Yeah. You have eight police officers across the country who in that same day had done something, fired. 
So yeah. why, why, why do we need due process? If you can see that problem and you see all those other problems, you don't need the due process. You need someone that has the balls enough to say, that's not right. You don't work here. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And I think, honestly, tying back to the George Floyd incident, if anything, the post aftermath of the post aftermath of that incident, I think one thing is that, you know, that, uh, equally, everybody, I think, has this perception that we all agree that what occurred that day was something that should never be happening in yeah. history, that, especially with law enforcement mm-hmm. supplying. It's not the a law. debate. Yeah, I think that's. They're not, they're, they're not. They're not supposed to kill anyone. Exactly. It's ever. They already had the individual apprehended. George yeah. Floyd was already on the ground. At what point do you still try to yeah, do all that? Their weapons are for self defense. Yeah, exactly. They're not for attacking. Exactly, and so at that point, one thing that I'm hoping everybody can understand is that there is no debate. What happened on that day was murder cold-blooded on broad daylight yeah. now the aftermath of it so much happened after that mm-hmm. we had riots we had protests we had people vouching people defending and i feel this caused a lot of racial division a lot of division overall mm-hmm. one p on one side people that say black lives matter other people say oh well all lives matter yeah and that kind of strives away from the message other people support police other people want to defund the police and yeah. so that's causing a lot of things but in terms of Let's start with the protesting aspect of it. In terms of the rioting, the uh, peaceful protests, what was your perception when you initially saw everything happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Well, I'll kind of double back too to touch on the the other point of mm-hmm. um, the the amount of people incarcerated. Yeah. So you have that idea that people um, think, hey, there it is. That's the amount of people. When we should do something about it, we should put all the police in their neighborhoods and helicopters, right? And yeah. We went on off on a different tangent about how people are bitching about helicopters. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing is that is what systemic racism is. That's what it is. That's what. That's why you see that many people because it's targeted, because it's in their neighborhoods, because TV tells you, because movies, because media, because – politicians because throughout the years and it's been watered down and that's yeah. because of the marches but because of the rights because of protests and because of now social media where people can continually see things happening because it, it get water poured out on it you see these stories happening all this stuff people were aware of people heard about you know the million man march and riots and protests and getting civil rights in 1964 yeah but then it was made to seem like you 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 want us to give you something for free you want us you know oh yeah yeah you know, and it was like oh we're, we you had to give somebody the a right to be the same that's just weird that we're giving people rights still women still got their rights in the 70s it's just to vote and it's crazy to think that who gets to say who gets to say gets these rights or not yeah it's, pretty much and that's where we're at and throughout the world and that's why people continue to fight um, when it comes to um, the police brutality, and obviously it's not acceptable the way that it sparked the outrage in um, the aftermath of it all that you want to get to the yeah. the the idea that um, the narrative went straight to the riots rather than the protests, and that was what hurt me the most, and that's where it woke me up the most is that people wanted to drive because that's a visceral thing and that's what we talked about earlier where maybe the violence is the is the answer to get you to notice mm-hmm. the message yeah and that's not the right way because there is no wrong or right way yeah all the ways to get the change are going to be the right way for people you may disagree with them yeah you may say violence or looting rioting isn't the right way you may be the person that says peaceful pro- protesting does nothing yeah you, you're not shouting you're not doing anything you're just walking down the street voting for somebody you may not you know, he may not be the right candidate for you mm-hmm. but that's a way to do it all three of those ways are viable ways to make change for people who believe that way yeah so i think the biggest thing is compiling all of those thoughts getting together which is what you see in black lives movement yep. is to have something and have an actual message a lot of people went out and were hurt so much that they thought that breaking a window or you know stealing a laptop or yeah. getting something for themselves is is the way to release that you know to get something back like yeah. that much like i got to i got to take something because 
I can't get it any other way. Mm-hmm. And that's where they're feeling. And that's not the right way. Like, if you want to be uh, uh, have the values and morals, which I think the majority share, you want to work and earn. You want to do that. You want to have yeah. the opportunity to do that. And a lot of people haven't been given that opportunity for generations. So if you can say someone who is multimillionaire and, you know, had a billionaire, you would assume that their family is going to be taken care of for generations. Oh, heck yeah. Yep. Right? They're not going to need to worry about it. So if you go to assume that, then you can also assume that someone who grew up on welfare, who maybe had – great grandma was a slave who didn't have a job, didn't wasn't educated, wasn't allowed to be educated, and they get out into the workforce and can't work, can't do anything – but but serve people the trade skills that they learned, picking stuff, labor. That's what they're – so they're still industrializing the U.S. after they you know are free. Yeah. But they still can't they're, – they're working for someone else now. Yeah, exactly. And when they tried – you know, that's the, the 1921 Tulsa riots. When they had Black Wall Street, when they yep. had all this stuff, that they go get it burned down and destroyed. Can you imagine if someone goes and actually burns down – Wall Street, yeah, because we don't want you guys to prosper. That's a silly thing to have. Like we want well, everybody wants everybody to prosper. I think yeah. that's an important topic that you're touching on, especially regards to the writing. I mentioned in my blog post about how a lot of people are misunderstanding the whole perception of the protests and riots. Initially, what I at first I was naive. I thought the riots were just people trying to take advantage of the situation. But the more I actually looked, it's into part of it, it too. It's it's definitely something evolving our wealth inequality in the U.S. And uh, on top of that, like, as you mentioned, a lot of our uh, ancestors of uh, people that have relatives of slaves, like, Mm -hmm. they didn't come up with the same upbringing that your average American household family would come up in. They literally had to... You can't make up generations of injustice, generations of inequality, and ask somebody, hey, do better, when they haven't been afforded the same opportunities that your family has been provided. And I think that's one of the things people don't really understand is that a lot of the writing, in my opinion, came down and boiled down to how much of a, a wealth inequality gap do we have to the extent that somebody out there feels the need to be performing these types of riots, break windows, steal stuff? Like, if that that should be a cause of concern for everybody in general. What am I doing to really provide opportunities to the people around me? Am I doing enough or am I not doing too much? Um, and in that sense, I just feel that people misunderstand rioting. I think well, you always hear that it's a, it's, it's a voice for the unheard, mm-hmm. as MLK would say. But I think people are misunderstanding and they believe that only thugs are rude, are um, looting and doing riots. Yeah. That's a misconception. Of course. I mean, just seeing it, knowing it, just being someone who is capable of making a conscious decision, you can see that everyone's doing it out there. It's not it's not a type of person. It, well, you know what? It is a type of person. Yeah. It's not a, it doesn't, it's not a look. It's not a... Of race, yeah, it's exactly. Not, it's not rich or poor. It's a type. It's a person that's willing to be opportunistic, right? But then there's also the person that that sees the opportunity in destroying something, taking something to stick it to the man, to give exactly, it to them, yep. to show that it's corporate business. And hell, you know, you can say majority of these people are going to get more money back from insurance or more back oh, money yeah, back from yeah. this and claims and anything like that than they will. Target's even come out and said something like that. He's like, I can rebuild a Target. I can't take, I can't give back a life, you know? And a lot of people will be saying things to market themselves better, but at the same time still donating to, you know, All these causes, causes that are and different anti- uh, Trump, you know, Trump yeah. supporting. And you, you see a lot of it where a lot of these people are, can sell you a dollar uh, hamburger, a, a dollar shoe or something like that discount all this stuff because they have the new slave labor which is prison labor oh yeah which is that's untalked and about nowadays a lot of somebody was like i saw somebody the other day that said i know you should be happy to have a job in prison or you shouldn't do the crime in prison and then you get into the whole you dummy majority of these motherfuckers shouldn't be in prison yep. they're getting rounded up and getting these you know trumped up charges no pun intended yeah. to to get them longer sentences crack yeah. cocaine right yep in cocaine you can have the rich white people starting up oh. in parties and that's cool and yeah. that's in Watch the crocodile them the movies those. and stuff yep. and we're cool but the, you know if a black guy a black person smoking crack crack cocaine it's vilified yep and now that you can actually see that in abundance where people can under understand and aware of that there it's it's a longevity thing it's a game where you we have to have people 
doing the checks and balances in life and calling people out, whether they're right or wrong, to let people know that there's a possibility and see that there's two sides to most every story. We, we need we need people to have the activism voices and keep speaking up through every time. And yeah. we need all of the voices because the people that are speaking with the language of the rioting, the people that are speaking with the uh, language of peaceful protest, with legislation, with, you know, running for office themselves even so, social media posts, whatever your contribution is, we need all of those voices because you're going to speak to your audience mm-hmm. and get them involved too, right? And, but the whole thing that we have to know is that we're all going to the same end goal. Exactly. And yep. a lot of people have different end goals, right? That's true. And the opportunistic protesting also comes around too. So the movement, let's stop police brutality. And that's where this started. Police brutality, Colin Kaepernick protested it, and then it became the how he protested it. Oh, yeah, So yeah. we got away from that two years, three years ago. And then now we're back to it. And we don't need to – we don't need to – there's no one – we're still talking about the rioting and the protesting of it, how you do – how you protest, how you riot, how you do this. And we shouldn't be talking about that. We should be talking about let's fix police brutality. Yeah. Police brutality needs to be, you know, reformed, defunded in the legislature so it stays that way. And it starts with our mayors. It doesn't start with the president. It doesn't start with Senate and House because that's where you're going to – they can override things and make it a national law. Mm-hmm. But in your own state, in your home city – if you're not educated as to who your politicians are, your mayor, your governor, uh, your council members, your sheriff, your DA, if you're not familiar with who those people are, yep. then you're going to be living in their community yeah. and their rules. You're not going to be living in the president's rules. You're not going to be living in that. He's there to kind of be the leader of our country to other nations, yep. to other people. And that's not being done well either. And yeah. whether you think he's good and that's why you support him because he bucks the system and he calls this and says this, you also have him who's also not – who's bucking the system by being friends with Putin and uh, Chinese presidents and saying good things about Kim Jong-un. It's it's not something that you would do with people who aren't allowed into the G7. You're yeah. inviting them in. You, you just now – you know, this new story where he was aware of bounties. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, that's on, right, that's on right. On Russian, US, yep. given to Afghan troops to kill U.S. soldiers. And, you know, he's saying what wasn't briefed on it. Or, okay, so that's a problem. Yeah. If it's... you didn't know about it. Okay, now you do know about it. But you're not doing anything about it. So that's a problem. And now you're saying, now your excuse today is that it wasn't credible. When? When wasn't it credible? That means that you were briefed. But yeah. you're saying it wasn't credible. Are you saying that they're saying it wasn't credible? But... Yeah, I don't know. I don't even understand. So just when you put out just a couple words with him, he knows what he's doing and he plays this game better than anybody is because he ended up being a damn president. Oh, believe me. Yeah, and he shouldn't be. And everybody even on his side is like he's he's perfect president because he's not like all other ones, which means you don't think he's presidential, mm-hmm. which means he's not he want you want him to be somebody different. And that's that's great. But you chose this guy. <laughs> yeah, and this is true. the guy that you chose to do what? He's not uniting. Oh, no. He, we're far from that at yeah. this point. Well, why do you he, think he, that is, he though? You get some money in your pocket, and that's what you think is worth everything else, your morals. and. Oh, you know. uh, yeah. It's a, well, why do you think right now at this time, with all the technological advances and just med- uh, medical uh, technology we have in place now, why do you think that – as a country and as people, we're so divided at this time. There's so much things that people disagree on, but why is it that now it's higher? America the Great? You know, we are a country of individuals, and we like our stuff our way. We don't have a collective kind of uh, society where it, we, unless it is about America. You know, I, I can I can see it in my head that if we were invaded by foreign troops on land our country would come together and be like, well, let's protect America, right? And, like, that's kind of how Americans see America. Like, we're proud of this country. Black people are proud of this country. Native Americans are, you know, should be pissed off even more so than anybody else in this world. Mm-hmm. It, not in this world. I don't, I don't know everybody's injustices, but from coming from my American history, the, the thing is, and I hate to say this because I still think that everything, there's there wasn't a price. There still won't be a price, but the given re, you know reparations yeah land given them back and it's not that was that was admitted to so the thing is 
the U.S. government has admitted to all of the injustices of slavery on the black people, mm-hmm. but there hasn't been any land issued, any reparations given to any of the ancestries. And we're not talking like we couldn't figure out who to give it to. Yeah. You have notes and, and bills of sale on people. Yeah, you know that's that? true. People sold people, so they have records of it. And that's yeah. crazy to think that, oh, if I need to go give a refund on something, I need a receipt on Joe Smith, you know? And that's where we lived at just a hundred years ago, where people were getting getting that done to them, and we don't think it. We think of it as like centuries ago, like way so long. We think we hear the word four hundred years, and we always think, well, four hundred years ago was a completely different time. Mm-hmm. Well, now that's when it started. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and it went on for a long time, and it just ended, and it just got Jim Crow, and it just got some segregation out of the way. So it's it's tough to say. It's tough to look back on things when you don't have the social media when you don't have it uh, uh twitter tiktok is just you know just got trump's yeah. rally sold out you know it's platforms that allow people to speak their voice you have everybody has a voice now mm-hmm. though too that's right so you have two different opinions always and that's what is america we've always been told you have two candidates to choose from this leader and this leader and we have an independent and that independent person, if you read about them, that person cares about both sides. Mm-hmm. So why is it that we have like a one, two, three percent vote percentage for independent running presidents because they're not polarizing? They're not my side versus your side. Yeah. Right. They're not. It's tough to hear somebody say, um, I want to let you keep your guns and I would want to bump the minimum raise. It's you. Both sides aren't going to like that. Yeah. Right? But at some point you like that. You need to have a lot of people with the Second Amendment rights. You want to have your guns. Keep your guns. Mm -hmm. I don't know when you'll need them other than hunting, other than in a slight case that an actual criminal with another gun breaks into your home. Yeah. Yeah. It's a possibility that you need to defend yourself. Have your gun. Now, the the idea behind it that it's your right to bear arms so you can rise up against your government, and that I don't agree with because that's what it's basically stating in the Constitution. So yeah. it, your government can just control you. You have your right to bear arms too. 100%. Yeah. And now everybody goes back, well, that was the muzzle-loading days where it took you, you know, <laughs> two, two minutes to get yeah. into a, a, a gunfight, right? And here you can just unload and do anything with your gun at any yeah. point, anywhere. And you don't that, – that could happen every day. So that's – that's good. That's a good um, argument for gun rights. Is that it could happen every day that everybody could just walk into anywhere and do this stuff, but it's not because yeah. people have morals to them. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that don't and they don't use them right, and then there's the people that think they do and don't use them right. And but I don't. Know, I got off track with that because there's gun control and all this stuff is a different thing. But when you have people uh, trying to divide somebody and not bring them together you see a lot of more people trying to unite on a democratic side because it's you know they're trying to talk to the the, the masses and the poor and the working class and yeah. that's what you know kind of their narrative is and then the republicans will say that well they're the ones keeping you down with their yeah, policies they're right. not the ones trying to make you money Whereas a lot of Democrats will see Republicans are the ones who are giving to themselves. They'll, they'll hire the, the 1%. People, yeah. So yeah, they're the ones that are making these economic changes for the people that are already have these jobs and careers and businesses that they're are established helping already, them out. Pretty yeah, much. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, You're not going to allow somebody to gain a business and get businesses and put back into the communities. Exactly, enough, yep. Yeah, to give them the opportunity. No, and that's resources. pretty much – I agree with that. I think – like and that's all boils down to systemic racism. At the end of the day, I think mm-hmm. people don't have people. There's a there's, there's two issues here that I think are very very open, but people aren't really discussing them. Uh, in top of the George Floyd incident, people focus on the on the riots, on the looting, all that stuff, the protests. Now, there's two issues that we definitely have to address as a society. The first one, police brutality. Mm-hmm. The second one, systemic racism. Well, in terms of police brutality, what's your perception of police post this incident? I know a lot of people have this narrative of, oh, Blue Lives Matter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm glad you brought up Blue Lives Matter because <clears throat> unless you're a Smurf, mm-hmm. I don't see any blue lives. <laughs> yeah. So I see a blue shirt maybe, and that's an occupation. So if you want to say all occupations matter, go for it. But when you say Blue Lives Matter, you're saying that the police officer – 
not the white or black or Hispanic or Korean, mm-hmm. anybody, any any person that's in the uniform. You're not saying that that person matters. You're saying that the job matters. Mm-hmm. And that's not that's not in the same relevance. It's not the same at all. When you say Black Lives Matters, you're talking about a group of individuals who are oppressed, systematically oppressed, and continue to be that way. And the system with the police brutality that they're allowed to do this way. Yeah. And the laws that are governed that says this is what we can do and we're not going to get in trouble for it. And then if we do get in trouble for it, it's y'all who pay for it. It's the taxpayer's yeah. money you get settled out. So in the movements of trying to fight for qualified immunity in a lot of cities um, – I think Colorado just issued that where qualified immunity means that you can take that money from the uh, the offender's pocket. Yeah. The police officers won't be able to settle on their pensions of hundreds of thousands of dollars and you know sit back and retire, resign, or go work in another police department. Because if now they're in a class action lawsuit and being convicted of something like that, yeah. they're not going to be able to get a job. That's right. So then the police can't do it. So in often cases, you have a brother – Think about any job you've ever had. There's people, you have employees, you have coworkers, some you like, some you don't like. But if someone came in and said something to your employee, your, to your uh, uh, fellow server, right? If a customer was rude to your server, even if you like that coworker or not, you're going to defend them. You're going to back them up. That's a rude ass guest yeah, and, you know, yeah, back them for up. Sure. If you see uh, one of your, your friends steal some uh, food, you know, or take home or not ring something in, and, you know, yeah, you're cool. You're going to let them slide. You're not going to go rat them out. You may not even do that if you see the person you don't like doing that just because you don't want to cause a problem doing this. That's this is a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Right. It could be in an office building where somebody's, you know, bringing in their, you know, uh, kids homework to fax and stuff all the time. And so <laughs> right, that's yeah. a, that's that's not that, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. But you don't say nothing about it. And then you get into different professions and there's, you know, lawyers and doctors and police and politicians and the kind of, you know, deemed more important into yeah. our society where those are coworkers, they're all employees. They're all going to be. In cahoots, just yeah. so to speak. At They're the not going to the want to rat out, and there's not going to be a lot of accountability in a lot of places. So you have managers, you have bosses and presidents and chiefs and lieutenants and sergeants that are do that, but they're all going into the same field. It's not like they're coming from one restaurant to another restaurant where you have to learn the whole new menu, a whole new way of doing things, a whole new serving. They're in, but you get the idea of it. But when you can go from one police department into the next police department and they have the same exact rules for everybody, for every each individual, for every situation, then you, you, you that's not malleable. Mm-hmm. Every, and police departments need to be malleable. So now we have a discussion of how do we handle going forward with the police. Police perception now is a lot of people are running the narrative that cops are bad people. They're brutalizing daily. This is happening daily. That is true. It happens. On the scale that police are doing good for communities, it's not on the same scale. Mm-hmm. But the problem is the system that's been in place, you have triple sometimes the cop patrolling neighborhoods where you assume people are, where you think people are. And that's where the crimes happen. So it's chicken or egg. You put all those people in there and catch all those people. Yeah, it's going to be more. It's the same thing as our president saying if we don't test we won't have bigger, more results. Well, yeah. No shit. Yeah. Right? But that doesn't mean that the problem doesn't exist because you don't get to see it. We get to see it a lot more now. So a lot of people right now currently are, have this idea that maybe all police are bad or the whole system needs to change or it, it continues to stop. And then you have people thinking, this is too much. I don't need to see this every day. This is how it is. Yeah. Blue lives matter. My my prop, my my family, this, this, and this. He's a cop. Is, all that. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's cool. And if you don't have somebody in a department that says, don't steal that food. That's not for you. You're stealing from this company. Yeah. That's, you know, that's somebody's pocket. If you have somebody, if you don't have somebody saying, get your damn knee off his neck, Mm -hmm. that's not how we do it. I wasn't trained that way. Yeah, it's true. So every one of those people is why the, the, that's such a, uh, uh, a need for have all of those people convicted and they've all been arrested now. Yeah. In the George Floyd matter, but countless other members yeah, have not been arrested. After that, too, yeah, incidents and, in general. And we touched on the fact that you can, you can just arrest them. You don't need the due process, yeah. You know, and to have somebody just c- completely break a procedure and to just still be on the same force, it's kind of like having somebody be impeached and still be in office and still make laws and stuff happen and affect people's livelihoods. That needs to, if you have somebody that that is in that much trouble they don't need to be still 
working. Yeah, exactly, hundred percent. Yeah. Why, why do you think that? Why do you think it's so hard for us as a community and as people or minority people, like, to get other people in that same like boat with us? Why do you think a lot of people are so? What's causing us from meeting in the middle? Perception. It's all perception because when you when you get down to it and you don't and if you can do the research and if you understand where police started from and where what it's trying to do and the jailing system and knowing that we have more people in jail in Louisiana than um, other people in the world, mm-hmm. right? Like in prison for whatever. And there's some stat with there. You have to Google that and look it up. Mm-hmm. But look up like how many people are in jail Louisiana versus other people in prison and in, in around the world, and it's just astonishingly crazy. And that's just one city in one state, and we're dealing with that. So the perception is when you see news articles and you see TV shows even, subconsciously or not, you're always seeing – or when you were growing up in in school, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut. I want to be Mm -hmm. a fireman. I want to be a police officer. Because they're coming to your schools, right? And police officers are heroes. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, there's like, you know – old movies and everything where you just see it perpetuated who's the criminal all oh, the black kid right who's yeah. the who's the who's the savior the white officer right you see it throughout tv history throughout media portrayed 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 i can't tell you how many you know procedural tv shows are on tv right now with police officers you know some of them are shining light with corrupt systems or not but then with that in mind you're saying that um you're you're breeding this concept of police officers have to um, the the ones we cheer for, right? They have to break the law to get yeah, the bad guy. Exactly. So we're making it seem like in our brains, like, oh man, yeah, but they're doing it for a good reason, mm-hmm. right? But Try to justify it. Pretty so much. then you have other police officers who might actually believe that I'm doing it for the right reason. This is I can't listen to the policy that was put in place because they have these policies, and a lot of times that's why they're being fired. That's why they're doing this, and that's also why they're being kept in place is because they're following that policy yeah sometimes those policies dictate that you can do that you can shoot somebody in the back while they're running away from you sad right that's something that somebody said one time yeah i mean <laughs> would, would so okay so in this sense since obviously there's such an issue with police and we definitely need a police reform are you for the um what is your opinion on abolish police and defund the police what are some things that are people getting misconstrued between those two things yeah well when you talk about abolishing and defunding abolishing can be taken a couple of different ways when you use that word so abolishing i'll just leave out Defunding the police is more of the narrative that Black Lives Movement want. Okay. A lot of mm-hmm. grassroots laws and a lot of uh, people that are in legislature are moving with. And their movement is um, to defund. So you have police budgets in a lot of cities that upwards of billions of dollars. Exactly. One, yep. $1.5 billion uh, for this year for um, L.A.'s uh, police department. Yeah. Where you have the rest of social issues, housing and um, um, whatever, every other um, – Healthcare, uh, streets, public, everything that we have, parks, recreation, yeah. stuff that you want to enjoy. But we have spent more money on the things that we think are keeping us safe from mm-hmm. doing that. And a lot of us can't even do that because we have to go to a job and work 40, 50, 60 hours yeah. to not have a time to take vacation. Just to be able to live in our house, we have to go yeah. work th- that many hours. So why are we spending so much time? And money on the policing, which, you know, I think L.A. just got a, a Tesla car for their police <laughs> for. Well, why do you need that? Why? Why, you, who's, why you know? America? So, I mean, you could get a Prius if you want an electric car. <laughs> but you true. don't need a it's, Tesla. It's true. If, if that was your niche, if that's what your thing was, was to get an electric car, do that. But when you can cut that police budget and put it back into the community and have people not feel that they need to go rip off a laptop when they got that chance. Thank you. That's it. They won't be more apt to do it when someone, there won't also be someone trying to counterfeit a $20 check so they can do something and feed their family or do whatever they need to be doing with it. Um, No one needs to die. So there doesn't need to be a character reference as to who people are. I don't believe in killing anyone. Yeah, so 100%. If you want to – if you think someone should die, I want you to go petition to that whoever so you can be the one to do it. Mm-hmm. If you – I want you to be the first one in line. You know, And I don't think – and it's not the he who is about you know, sin cast the first stone. We all have sins and stuff. But and if everybody casts stones, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be in a predicament. 
but you can learn mm-hmm. after you threw a stone you can learn that was the wrong thing i'm never going to throw a stone again yeah you can learn but then some people don't learn until it's too late or they've been called out on it uh, definitely and yeah. i th- i think that's one of the things that you mentioned and i think you really hit it on the nail when people say defund the police this doesn't mean it doesn't mean abolish the police yeah we can't get rid of the police department yeah, we need people to there are criminals there are uh, you know it's the reality of life. Well, how about we put police out in Wall Street where you have, you know, $400 million scams mm-hmm. and you have people bribing and doing all this stuff that are actually affecting people's livelihoods and living, their checks, their pay, their business. You have people that can sit on a computer and go, I'm going to gamble that this company, you know, I tell, I like to tell this story where people – that's what a lot of people do. Like just be smart and, and invest in – invest in whom? You're investing in – the fact that an idea that one person who makes a part for a, a kiosk, mm-hmm. they're going to make one part. They're may, they're get, getting by. They're maybe on welfare. They're working paycheck to paycheck to feed their family for that week. And then they go home. All right. Then you have somebody making the screen for that kiosk and they're in a different factory. But then <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have somebody in another factory building the whole Assembling component together. The whole thing. Yep. You have somebody building the building, laying the groundwork, a construction crew. You have a building, different people with the construction of it all, different people. You have the painters doing something. Mm-hmm. And you have the employees working in the store. You have somebody that put the, installed the kiosk the into system. the store. And you have all these people. Then you have somebody who owns the company who told somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody to do all that stuff. Yeah. And then you have somebody just somewhere going, I think that's going to work. There's $1,000. Now they're more, they have more money than any of those people yeah. who put the groundwork and to put the labor into that that's system. Right. And that's what we have. That's America. That's capitalism. You have, but the thing is, I'm an independent really. And you probably see a lot of my views kind of lean left, lean mm-hmm. democratic, but I'm I'm for the betterment of everyone, and we can't do that because there's a lot of people who like this and like that, and you need to find a way. You have to think outside of the box because the way we've been doing it has been the div- division. We've had two-party system for this long. Yeah. And whether it's one, three, or four, or get different, better candidates, or have four people running, you know, so you have four people in, on both sides yeah. rather than that. So total of eight people, vice presidents and all. We think you can do anything. You really can. Okay. And but I- we have to be on board with it. We have to have somebody that is going to, you know, s- structure and lead that kind of vibe. The structure. Yeah. That's really it. I think mm-hmm. the only, for my, my personal opinion, the only way to really solve this whole um, police issue is to really, instead of investing so much of the budgets in police, so in reinvest in the communities that need that aid, that need that help. And that means just creating better social programs, yeah. better programs to uplift people. And, and if you have a, a, a city that's, you know, going to be counteracted by taking away from their police department, you've got to find, find a better way. It's not just take away from them. Mm-hmm. You can find better outlets for it. You can put the money into someone else who's better suited to handle a call. You can have... Someone being along with them, a social worker in a case of domestic violence. You don't have to have a police officer with a gun going to an already agitated place. Exactly. If I saw a gun, I only know guns are good for shooting things. Yeah. I don't – that's it. There's nothing that a gun isn't for. And that's why a lot of these uh, protesters on the right that went to Capitol Hill, so let's reopen our country and had AKAs, AK-45, oh, what, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But if you have all these guns sitting there, you don't have to even say anything. Yeah, the true. weapon speaks for itself. It does. Read my sign, and if you don't do with it, there's a possibility. Look at my gun here. I'm going to shoot you with it. That's a possibility. you yelling at somebody's face with a gun strapped onto you. They're may going to listen or they're not going to listen a little bit better yeah. to you, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you have somebody that, that's – and, you know, I was out in the protest and you have these idiots that are instigating these things. And I stopped countless people. You can't do everything, but you have to be able to uh, step up. And it's scary to think what happens if I do stop this person from spray painting on a building or breaking a rock or throwing a firecracker or something to rile up the crowd. But – there's way more people out there, and if everybody got that mentality of let's stop these idiots from deterring from our message, we, 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 you could do that. But that's at right, the same time, right. like we said, a lot of that stuff is what the media blew up, so now we're all talking about it. I agree. One of, one of the things that you mentioned, I think you're really starting to touch up on this, is just uh, the free speech and the individualistic responsibility sure. you have as an individual. Hey, you're free to speak, but you're also free to take the consequences. Exactly. You mentioned in one of your Instagram posts, and I quote the following and mm-hmm. paraphrasing, you should be able to voice your opinion, yet remain humble enough to hear what someone is saying, mm-hmm. factoring everything you believe to move forward. And you, you've asked a follow-up question. Is it more detrimental to keep to yourself 
or not to help someone else understand any situation. Now, the message I got is pretty simple. If you have an opinion, voice it. Be challenged. That's the only way you can really understand one another. Sure. And I think that's something people are starting to strive away from. And I think that's why we can't find any common ground to really push for solutions as a as a group, as a mm-hmm. as a uniform, unilateral community. And I, I, yeah. how do you feel about that in general? People can't reach common grounds for these things. I mean, talking and conflict is how people change and grow, right? So, good or bad, you you never had somebody take over a country by shaking hands and saying, mm-hmm. "Can I have this?" Right? A lot of people, you have to go take stuff. And that's how America got it. And yeah. so at the same time, we're talking about how proud we are to be Americans. Our history is that we came and took this land, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And other colonies and different different stuff. So I don't know my history enough to go back to say who was the first people that went out and took land from people. But it started somewhere. And the competition to be bigger, better first without including everyone in the whole world. And then we've just separated so much that... It's the competition. You know, a lot of people say money is the root of all evil, and I think competition is more so. Yeah. And it's not the competition of the healthy kind of let's make each other better because that's what you're doing. Let's make each other better. Both of us mm-hmm. will be better. But it's the competition of I'm going to be better than you. I'm better. I'm first. I'm bigger, faster, stronger. I've got more money. And that's what the competition is individual in america yeah. and throughout the world and you see a lot of people say well americans are braggadocio but we like that about them because they're confident yeah but it's also arrogant yeah of and course. it's also saying that you think you're better but you're not you think it is mm-hmm. and but you're not so like confidence but you also have to be humble enough to say well maybe i'm wrong maybe things are different maybe things could be done better and that we you know to how, how do you develop that though for people i think conversation talk but there's thing a lot of people we're finding out are content you know, they're yeah. content with, with keeping it as is, right? Mm-hmm. And that's okay if 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 the world has changed to suit your your capabilities. And for me, I think I'm fine too. I'll be okay wherever I am in life, and that's my mentality. Yeah. A lot of people don't have that mentality. They're not, you know, blessed with uh, being able to gain that knowledge and have the the background of where things came from and where they're going to go and what how you're dealing with them, how they relate to your daily life now. Yeah. So once you can gain some sort of knowledge and direct it into your daily life and help other people, um, I would I mean, you're going to stay stagnant. Yeah. There's ways to get to places and you can be content. And if I can if I'm using my voice, I'm using my activism, I'm using my my actions to help other people that don't have the opportunities Mm -hmm. to 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 speak up and voice these things. And those can often be taken as, you know, hypocritical or double standard. Like, oh, you didn't have to deal with that stuff. Maybe not in the way you think, but in different ways. Exactly. That's so right. I, that's I understand right. it from coming from me where, you know, it could be as simple as growing up everywhere where somebody says, well, you don't act black. Well, what is that? What is yeah. acting black? You have and, and somewhere on the way, because I get it from both sides that I don't I'm not black enough. Or I'm not light enough. I'm not, you know, no, I'm no one ever going to see me walk down the street and say, look at that white person. Yeah, I'm just as much white as I am black. Yeah. But I'll identify as biracial or black, you know, and mm-hmm. that's just how it's always been. But when people say you don't act black or you, this or that or I, I don't understand, I never understood that concept because I was never. An, uh, had a, a set standard of mm-hmm. what black was. You're just being yourself. I knew what they meant. I don't, I don't know what they meant, and it was like the hip hop route and yeah. thuggish, and you know that stuff where that that was a stereotype. And and then I started thinking, I was like, man, I got into the acting world, and and the the people that are making the music that you think are so gangster, and and and, and they are so fucking talented. There's a, these people are so talented, musicians, artists, anyone, any genre of music. And you think that it's so easy. You think acting's easy. You think of this stuff. It's an art. It's a skill. It's just any like any other profession that you have to you know hone and craft. And if you think that these are uneducated, uh, don't have any sort of opinions in in their life because of how they speak or how they talk, that's just a type of person. And then that's that is what a rapper is. Yeah. You to you to be a doctor, you wear a white lab coat. To be a rapper, you you're in that culture. That's what you do. That's who you are. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. If you're a country music artist, you tend to wear country music style and and go that route. All right. Talking about it and dealing with stuff. There's people that like all these different things. And when you get into the all lives and the blue lives and yeah. and you know the whole connotation of well, this isn't the problem right now. All lives do matter, but right now the black lives. You know, house is on fire. We need to put that fire out first before we save the other house, right? One, That's 
one of the old arguments that people always make is that, well, and you will hear this commonly, is that, um, okay, black lives do matter. But mm-hmm. you see in inner city Chicago, black people are killing other black people and people are yeah, saying, sure. well, you don't hear about that on the news. Sure, so sure, sure. That's the cop White, out, white people much. kill white people. Yeah. But the thing is, you hear black on black crime and you hear that that's a thing. Mm-hmm. That pe- that's an that's a, that's a actual thing that happens. So is white on white crime. Yep. Probably more so. I mean, white people kill white people, uh, and black people kill white people. White people kill black people. Asian people kill different colored people. Everybody kills everybody. Yeah. But the fact that black on black crime is a thing mm-hmm. is a phrase people say and think of, and they think gang violence and guns and all yep. this stuff. That's that's a, that needs to go away. That way of thinking doesn't need to be a part of uh, uh, our current uh, the, uh, our culture or your mindset. It doesn't you don't need to think that. Oh, there's an alternative. Let's get these stuff. Let's let's get this, what we talked about. Let's get better education. Let's get better community centers. Let's get better um, uh, communities in general. Let's stop mm-hmm. making them feel afraid. Let's m- start making them f- vilified. Let's stop portraying people as these individuals always, yeah. wherever you go. So then you have somebody that stepped out and isn't on the street or doesn't maybe talk like this or act like this. And you see, oh, well, there you go. They're doing it right. They're acting white they're acting in, in accordance. You have yeah. people that are successful in every field, every walks of life, and that's how they do it. But there's this thing with the white supremacy yeah, yeah. that says this is how you are supposed to do it, the American dream. Yeah. The, well, the American dream came with a white picket fence, yeah. not a black one. Yeah. So <laughs> It's true. I mean, you know, honestly, I think that's the one thing that's been very frustrating for me personally throughout this whole thing is mm-hmm. that the, there's issues to be talked about. But when people say, well, have you seen this? Well, yeah, we're also seeing mm-hmm. that. But we're also seeing this. It's it's not a this or that. It's both. We yeah, can exactly. see more than one thing. And <laughs> oh, I like that. I, that's the one thing that I'm really – I'm boggled by how people can't understand that concept. Like, like for example, with the solutions and – solutions, all right. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, well, we should abolish blah, blah, blah. Oh, we should defund. And other people are like, oh, well, we should uh, have full, more police. Yeah, okay, yeah. why can't we all meet in the middle? And find something that a little yeah. bit of everything. There's no just or how you work it. We had plenty of police force when I'm out there protesting. And you have 15 guys on each block yeah. corner blocking off the thing, corralling people, versus you know stopping the five or six people that were breaking windows exactly. or spray painting. Exactly. Like, why, look at they're committing a crime, but you're just making sure that this whole crowd goes this direction. Yeah. So we're all when they do start doing this, it's crazy, and we can't go. Why wouldn't you let people out of this direction? Yeah. You're keeping yeah. them in. That's, that doesn't make any sense the way they did it. So let's re. Imagine how you that w- they were told to do that. I'm just doing my job. Yeah, well, they were yeah. you were instructed to stand there and crowd people in there. So don't blame the police officer. Blame you can blame him for not having balls Speak enough to up, yeah. not do that and just fall in line. And yeah. but then you need to who who wrote that bill? Who told you? Who exactly. instructed you That's to do right. that? That's get right. them out of there That's and right. then get the other person out of there that defended them or keep kept their job. And that's what we need to do. Get rid of the people that are the bad actors that are not actually following the laws that were on there in the first place. Let's change some of the laws so that they aren't even, you know, put into effect. And, you know, they're not apt apt to go out and do these things and pursue them. I, to me, it's a, I think I agree wholeheartedly with that. It's in my in my eyes, it's. It's not a black or white issue. There's, there could be a gray spot in the middle that yeah, we all have. This to will find. affect every part of exactly, communities, all exactly. poor communities, all people that don't have as much as they maybe deserve or could or should have. And a lot of, I think that's the way the maybe the right, the Republican side kind of leans is mm-hmm. yes, we want you to have the opportunity, but the way we're going to do it is you have to step on these people to get there. Yeah. And the other side is. Well, we're all together in this and let's just make sure everybody has a little bit of everything. So both sides are seeing it as you can get it, but you have to do it this way and you can get it, but we have to do it this way yeah. where nobody's coming together and saying, let's take both of these together and create the best way. So we always have that my way or your way. So in, in that sense, what is the best? Okay. So for every viewer here, for the single individual mm-hmm. person that's listening or for the single individual person that's asking, like, what can I do? How can they actually, that single individual Here, how about provide this? solutions? How about this? I saw this one. This is this will sum it up. You, when <laughs> when your girl and you, let's say, when you and your partner getting it done, and they're like, and you're, and you're oh, let's say, let me start over. You, you're having sex. Your partner says, 
or you'd say to your partner, do you like my... Yeah. Am I cussing on this? You could, I'm yeah, trying to not ahead. to be. I'm trying to be like yeah. less PG here. So. Oh, I'll tell the story. So if you're having sex with Barter yeah. and and the person says, "Hey, hey, you like my dick?" Yeah. And she goes, "Well, I like all dicks. <laughs> all dicks matter." Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to feel good for you, right? Uh, yeah. So think about it that way. You you want the person to like your dick right now. At that because moment. that's in that's this right. moment, that's the one that's trying to get you to pay attention Promise to it, land, yep. right? But when that person's like, <laughs> I, like <laughs> I like, I like all dicks. Oh, your your, sorry, your dad's sorry. dick, <laughs> my brothers, cousins. I like Trumps. Uh, I like this. I like a little. You know, it's yeah. No, it, it's it, that's what people critical. are saying, and that's what social media is is great about now is that people will get to understand eventually in their own terms when they come across something like that that's relatable to them. Yeah. So they're gonna see that and be like. Oh shit! Like, you know, like racism is is big, is small dick energy. That's yeah. that's offensive to what you would stereotype to uh, a white supremacist, right? Yeah, Talk about yeah. their dick or something like that, right? Yeah. So something like though that'll hit somebody and be like, "Well, I'm not racist because I have a big dick." Yeah, you know, yeah. whatever it is, it's going to get somebody to think is what's happening right now with social media. But you also have to be smart enough to know which link or which which post, which which opinion. Follow the people you like. Go to the links, support them, you know, find out what's going on in your communities, get the um, the, get the the 411 on everybody. Like I said, the mayor, your DA, the sheriff, those are the most important people in your immediate community that have the laws that govern. Your mayor is the most important person in your city, and they're the ones that get to fund the police. They're the ones yeah. that get to tell to, to restrict. They're the ones that tell you to wear your face mask or not. So those are the people you need to watch and follow and vote for more importantly than let's be polarizing on our president because it's like, look here, look here, look here, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, the two idiots yeah. we have to pick from. Yeah. And nobody's saying, well, is Garcetti doing us the right thing? Yeah, is true. he the one keeping this perpetuated we just, we just in, in L.A.? That. That's right. Yeah. I think uh, at, at the end of the day, it's it's going to come down a lot to uh, yeah. two things. One, as an individual, what are we doing around our communities to kind of help become a better community mm -hmm. secondly how involved are we getting in our political system are we going out yeah. there and really researching these candidates that if i always say if we can all get on the same page as we, what we want as a community mm -hmm. we'll make sure that these representatives can meet those needs and those standards and that's the best way to make progression but you know it's a it's a very i'm hoping we can reach that end point sometime soon but well, sure, man. it's gonna be a very difficult well, you're journey. a prime example of the future right you're a young kid got a, 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 a podcast blog mm -hmm. you're into the community and stuff so as long as the message keeps getting put down it's not going to go away and it'll be uh, held accountable people will be you know aware of it yeah. for generations to come Definitely. and now you get to see a little bit more that's why i kind of looted back when i was 10 and rodney king happened and i knew, i was aware of that i was aware of a lot of things i was aware of marches and stuff I, I but even in my head i'm thinking like oh dang they beat, they beat this dude that's bad and yeah. then i never went on like that's all i really remember from that i didn't remember the riots and the protests i remember the the riots and the protests i don't remember anything about them like i do now i don't remember the mo the movements as to the why but i didn't have this outlets like like there is available today where you get to see this stuff and reference stuff in a short little 30 second video maybe where somebody can put together oh that's what happened in the Tulsa riots. Yeah. Oh, damn. Anne Frank and Martin Luther King, if they were alive today, they would be the same age as Barbara, Barbara Walters. That shit puts things in perspective. <laughs> it does. It does you think that those people are from different generations and you think that history them. is so fucking long ago. But history is history. And the whole Still if there. you don't remember history, you're doomed to repeat it. You're doomed to repeat the bad parts because you can always parts. try to be better. But if you don't know and understand where it came from, exactly. you'll keep perpetuating it. What's... What's your final message to just to just everyone in general? Like in general, what's your what's your one if, message that you really want to get across that you haven't had a chance yet? Just use this platform right now. What's the one message that you're really trying to get out there for everybody undergoing all this duress from? Don't let up. All that. My message would be don't let up. If you have your own message, if you have your own um, organization, if you have people you follow, you can't stop because this is a movement and you can't let it stymie out this is a, a revolution in itself this is the war that's going to be fought without the um actual physical battle this isn't the on the field war this is an uh a plea for humanity you have people 
from all different nations now talking about America as being the people who are hurting their own citizens. Mm -hmm. Where you usually get that narrative, Americans or other countries are the ones that are hurting their citizens. So Americans have to go there and solve their problems. So what I want is for people to focus on solving our problems in our community to make to 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 make this society the way that it should be in the whole world to see just keep keep your mission up keep going keep driving keep sharing so that you uh have the younger generation that keeps coming up to you educate yourself but most importantly enact it do it learn about your politicians but learning about them does nothing if you don't vote them into office support their 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 campaigns and a lot of things you can't get into office unless you make a quota on your campaign con- contributions so let's find a way to change that let's find a way to get your candidates in office whether that they're just this person had to because they got more money in their pocket get your candidate in office make the change put it on paper and hold people accountable ladies and gentlemen kenny Ware, thank you very much i appreciate you for dropping by uh to the people any upcoming projects that you have Anything in general, um, projects, Instagram links? I don't have any specific links. With I, I, Same thing. I'll say go to your people that you trust. Go to the people that you feel that have the same kind of um, vibe going on with you, that your message that you want to send. Support them. Share them. Keep that message going because you never, never know who sees something and sees a message and gets something from that and then shares that. And then that next person will know. You never know. You never know. So speak up. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, can you wear Thank you very much, Kenny. I appreciate, I appreciate you dropping you guys. by. It was a good time.